Well, on what SATAM intends to do for the African continent, the IATA 20-year traffic forecast indicates that between now and 2037, air transport in Africa would grow annually by 4.8% year on year. By 2037, we expect that the volume of traffic that will be carried by African airlines will increase from the current 135 million to 334 million passengers a year. Now, this will likely be spared by the growth in the GDPs of the African economies and the principles that are work, being worked on now aimed at opening up the market through the single African air transport market. So, once we have an open market, it will enable more airlines to come in and compete for existing traffic and stimulate additional traffic. As you are aware, once there's demand for air transport and competition increases, fares tend to fall. And therefore, a group of passengers who today cannot travel by air because the fares are high would have the opportunity to travel by air. And as we all know in the travel and tourism industry, for every 10 arriving passengers at an airport, one new job is created. Therefore, we expect to see an increase in the number of employees arising from the aviation sector. Today, the contribution of aviation to many of the African economies is very small. But we anticipate to see a boost of this going forward because of the growth of the volume of traffic that we are going to be seeing in Africa. So there are a lot of opportunities for Africa to actually grow the economy, create more opportunities for our citizens, increase business efficiency and grow our tourism sector through the open market as a result of the single African air transport market. Well, they are right. Yamosukro decision is over 20 years old and its implementation has not made significant progress, though there has been some little traction. Now, but the difference between the Yamosukro decision and the single African air transport market is that the single African air transport market is a follow-up to the Yamosukro decision. So the reasons which impacted the failure to implement the Yamosukro are being addressed through the single African air transport market. This morning in my submission, I did indicate that there are some regulatory texts which are currently being developed. Some of them have been adopted by the Heads of State Summit. Others are still being worked on. We have the competition rules, the dispute settlement mechanisms, the powers and, um, uh, powers and functions of the executing agency. All of these regulatory texts are intended to bring about a harmonious implementation of the Yamosukro decision through the single African air transport market. So we are going to see much more traction going forward. The second element is that under the Yamosukro decision, the expectation was that Africa would one day open up its market among all the 55 countries. Unfortunately, that is a very, um, a weird way of looking at the, the size of the continent and different countries that are involved, expecting them to open up at the same time. Under the single African air transport market, we are seeing a convergence towards those countries that believe in the principles and benefits arising out of the aviation industry to commit to open up their markets to each other. So it is not waiting is not going to wait for all countries to come on board before the market is open up the 28 that have already signed the solemn commitment and the 14 that have up to date signed the memorandum of implementation are being encouraged to start active implementation by opening up their markets to each other and the others whenever they are ready they can join join 
in. So we're going to see a more of a phased approach into the implementation of a single Afghan air transport market rather than a wholesale implementation under the Yamasukro decision. So that's what is going to make the difference and going to get, get us see some more traction sooner. Well, this, this platform, like many similar ones that we have in Africa, is a great opportunity for the participants to network, discuss issues of interest and of concern to the African aviation industry. The, we need, however, to go beyond the discussion stage and to try and be more practical. Unfortunately, the decision makers who should make things happen are normally the government and government-related organizations who, who unfortunately are always missing from these events. We need to bring them on board and let them understand and appreciate the contribution of air transport to their economies and what our respective countries are missing by not opening up their countries. This way, we will spare up the speed and, and, and speed up the implementation of Yamasukro decision. So we need more practical approach to it rather than keep discussing and coming up with proposals and never going beyond that.